The Terminator is a love story, and I'm going to tell you why. Let's talk about the movie. Um, I looked at The Terminator the other day. I remember through most of my childhood only looking at bits and pieces. I don't know why. There's some movies where I've only seen bits and pieces of it. I remember The Godfather at one point. I watched it and I had to do something and I could never sit through an entire viewing of it. Same thing with The Terminator. Um, the scenes that mainly stick out to me when I was younger were the police scene when Arnold Schwarzenegger just barrels through the police station. And that's about it. Everything else is kind of misty. So I dedicated the other day, entire hour, 40 minutes or however long the movie is, um, to look at the entire movie in its entirety. And I have to say, I like it a little bit, just a little, little bit better than T2 Judgment Day. And I want to tell you why. I feel that The Terminator, as awesome as that movie is in terms of sci-fi, in terms of it being foundational for this technoir, a term that James Cameron coined as something that's almost like a got, uh, film noir meets you know tech sci-fi slant to it. As much as this film is all those things, um, I feel it works and it's most successful as a love story. And I'm going to explain it why. I'm going to explain why. Um, first, from the concept element of it being a love story. Then I want to break down like the characters and how I feel Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor work to bring the Terminator, that story, uh, to life. And then, then I want to talk about how some of those movies, uh, subsequent sequels, I've kind of drifted away from the element um, in terms of the grander scope, in terms of callbacks to the original, the Terminator franchise. So let's break it down. Um, I'll give a broad paint strokes. You guys probably already know the story of the Terminator. Mankind in the future is decimated and there's only a very scant few of humans that are fighting for the savior of us, fight, fighting for humanity. There's these machines that are going across the globe and just eradicating the remnants of humanity. And at a, as a last ditch Hail Mary, the hero by the name of John Connor sends back a young warrior to find his mother and save his mother um, from the grips of a Terminator who's also been sent back to hunt her. And the whole plot is if the Terminator kills John Connor's mother, who John Connor is like, the savior of mankind. If the Terminator kills the mother, then John Connor wouldn't be, and then mankind would be wiped out. So basically, in the, in the Terminator, uh, John Connor sends back a man called Kyle Reese to protect his mom. Kyle Reese has a picture of her. He knows exactly what she looks like. But what's the great thing about the Terminator movie is it sets up this aspect that Kyle Reese may be the enemy from the perspective of Sarah Connor's eyes. They James Cameron kind of plays with that idea of, I don't know, she doesn't know who is the enemy. And then over the course of the movie, Sarah Connor, over the newscast, she's hearing stories of women by the name of Sarah Connor being killed. So it's like a serial killer killing women named Sarah Connor. And she, she's, she feels that she's next, but she's not cowering in fear. She's continuing with her day to day. She's a waitress and she's She's not a great waitress. It seems like this is like her first job and she's she's just fumbling through the whole thing. She's not really lucky with love. Hangs out with a girlfriend who's more successful in that department. She her girlfriend has a boyfriend and boy uh, her date calls Sarah Connor to cancel the date. So she missed that on that entirely. So Sarah Connor says, you know, fuck it. I'm just going to go out, enjoy myself. And while she's out she runs into both Kyle Reese and the Terminator. The Terminator is coming, hunting her down and Kyle Reese is there and she looks at Kyle Reese as, oh, this is the killer. He looks, he has all the symptoms of a killer and she's fearing for her life. So she decides to run. But what she doesn't know is the real killer, Arnold Schwarzenegger, is like right behind her and he raises his gun and is about to fire and Kyrie pulls out a shotgun and blasts him away. Long story short, it becomes a cat and mouse game of 
Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor running away from the Terminator as he pursues them through the course of the movie. Most of this happens, I believe, over the course of like, what, two days and one night? Uh, maybe two days and two nights. Yeah, like two days and two nights. And um, it's really great. It's, it's a really great film. It, it, James Cameron uses the tension of a thriller, of horror, but he encapsulates it in the pair of these two beings. And I want to kind of break down those characters. Um, let's start off with Kyle Reese. Okay. Kyle Reese from the beginning of the movie, the movie kind of opens up with this like narration of Kyle Reese telling you exactly what has happened to humanity and what they're trying to do and, and stuff like that. So from a, from a beginner aspect, if you never know about the Terminator franchise, if you never experienced it and you watch this movie, you feel that, Kyle Reese is the hero. And in some regards, he is. He is the hero. Um, but the true hero in this movie is Sarah Connor. But back to Kyle Reese. He's someone who's grown up his whole life running, fighting, you know, barely scraping by, you know, eating rats or God knows what else they could scrap by because, you know, all the farm life is pretty much gone. They don't really get into that, but you can tell that food and resources are very, very scarce. And they're doing the best they can to get by. And the Terminators, as they're coming through, you don't really know because they've, they've developed a new plan. They're actually, actually creating Terminators that look like humans. They have you know, skin and blood, but underneath it's just clear circuitry and, and, and exoskeleton. One of these Terminators, a group of these Terminators, infiltrates his, his rebel group and shoots up most of the people. And Kyle Reese, gets out barely alive. He gets sent back. He gets put on the mission by John Connor to go back in time to protect his mother because right now basically their their society is done. This is this future that Kyrie comes from is a future where Sarah Connor has does, was killed and basically John Connor is is doing the best he can with what he had. So Kyrie is sent back in time. And when we meet him, he he's just as gruff, not so menacing as Arnold Schwarzenegger's character. He's more of like a, a grizzled knight, you know. I, I, I'm I'm willing to do whatever it takes to fulfill my mission. And what's great about Kyle Reese is that there is a there is a soft side to him, but it, it's been hardened. It's been hardened by the years of war. It's been hardened by the years of fighting. He's only nice up until a point. He's only cordial up until a point. And you can see this when the police interrogate him and, and they want to know more about his story. And they assume that he's insane because he's talking about robots and futures and timelines and time machines. And, you know, he's I'm trying to be as respectful as possible, but I have a mission. I, there's something I need to do. And when he beats Sarah Connor. And he saves her. He's a little bit rough. He's a little bit gruff. It, it takes a while for him to kind of like ease up and kind of like, okay, I got to realize this is the mother of the savior. This is the mother of, you know, the future. And I need to kind of treat her with respect. And there's another part of it because Kyle Reese, he's been, I would, yeah, he has been fantasizing about her. John Connor gave her a pitch, gave him a picture of his mother. And he's been looking at that picture. And he even explains it in the movie how he's recognized. And he even tells her, I've recognized every trace. I can recount every trace of your face. I can feel that, you know, in this picture, you're very sad. I can, I can, he's, he's empathizing. He's been empathizing and daydreaming and fantasizing about who this woman was. And he's fallen in love with her. It's his mission. He's fallen in love with a woman he's never met, but it's a mission of, I need to protect. I need to save. And if I do this, not only will I do this and save the future, um, but maybe there's maybe there's a possibility. And he doesn't really know. He doesn't really know his role. That's the, that's what the kind of movie kind of gets to. He doesn't know that he is the father of John Connor, which is brilliant. He just knows that I have a mission to protect this woman for my my boss and for someone who I look up to, for someone who trained me. And I think that's incredibly fascinating that not only is he there to 
not only does he have these feelings and he's and you're seeing over the course of the movie him kind of softening up you know kind of letting his guard down to the fact that he needs to save sarah connor it, it, it seems like he's opening up more he's talking more he's emoting more he's he's explaining more and i think that's some of the brilliance of this movie it's something that they didn't really have to do they could have just made kyle reese this like han solo type of character where it's like listen bitch let's go like this is this is what you do. i don't care if you like me you know you know the rogue and this this this, this damsel in distress you know type of thing but they made it so that like not only does he love her he respects her he knows the history of sarah connor even though she doesn't know he knows the legend of sarah connor even if she doesn't and I, I really like that dynamic. I really like that they cast Michael Bean, who's a, who's a fantastic actor. I loved him in like everything that he's done. And I think that's why him as Kyle Reese works. Now, I, there's a little bit of trivia. Before I get to get Sarah Connor, there's a little bit of trivia that originally, um, I think some of the producers wanted Arnold Schwarzenegger to play the Kyle Reese role. And I think James Cameron's like, nah, I'm not, not, I'm not feeling that. And I think... James Cameron like invited Arnold Schwarzenegger to kind of like not, not only test him out, but you know, kind of push him to the point like I want him to get mad so I can just prove my point that he's not really good at this. He's not really good to be Kyle Reese. And over the course of lunch, he was floored by Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was floored by his dedication, his his intelligence, uh how enthusiastic he was about, you know, reading the script and the and the role that he cast him instead of being Kyle Reese and as cast him as a Terminator. And I think that worked out brilliantly. But yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why I like Kyle Reese. I like because he's able to kick ass. He's able to, you know, follow orders and do what he needs to do. But there's something in him that's like, I I respect this woman. I'm not going to treat her like shit. I respect this one because I do love her and I want to protect her. And I don't know my true role. I don't know who, what, why. Other than me being sent down here for, I don't know my true role and maybe, and probably John Connor knew, but like, I love her. And that was like, from the core of Kyle Reese, he, he gains that aspect the more he's there with Sarah Connor. Let me talk about Sarah Connor. She's, Linda Hamilton is, <laughs> is a fantastic, fantastic actress. What I realized about her character is, you know, she's more of like, it's almost like a coming of age tale for her, you know? I, I I suck at work. You know, nothing really works out for me. I'm, you know, I'm the third wheel in a, in a friendship with my girlfriend and her boyfriend. So, you know, love really never works out for me. I'm kind of just skating by. I'm just getting by. And, you know, I have my, you know, pet iguana. Uh, and, you know, th th this is my life, you know, but there, there's something that I know there's something more for me out there. It's just, it just hasn't happened. It just hasn't fallen in her lap, but into her lap like that right now and over the course of the movie you see glimpses of like her strength you know you see glimpses of the woman the legend that she's become but it's not fully realized yet it's like her it's like sarah connor begins you know and what's fascinating about this version of sarah connor is that over the course of not only hearing the news about all the other Sarah Connors that are being killed, it does scare her, but she lives her life according. It's not like she's like, oh my God, like, listen, hide me in the house and lock the doors. Like, I don't want, I don't want to be here. I, I, I you know, I want to be protected. It's, it's she, she's not that type of woman. She's like, listen, I know there's danger coming, but like, there's still things that I want to do. There's still things that I want to experience. And it's, she never explicitly says it. It's just through her actions. It's just how she interacts through the movie. Um, how she carries herself. And when she hears about, you know, her girlfriend, you know, being killed, there's an anger there. Even though she's crying and she's, you know, heartbroken, there's an anger there. And when she's, you know, trying to call the police and tell her, tell them her, her location, she's trying to help them solve the case. Like, listen, I'm here at this club, Tech Noir. I really appreciate if you guys could get here right now, because I think the guy who's here to kill me is here. So I'll, I'll, I'll wait here for as long as possible, but I, I really want you guys to, you know, be about it. And the cops, they're like, they're dragging their ass and they're, they're trying to help, but they're, they're not really. And so she's no, she, everything that she's doing, she's doing with the tools that she has. And Kyle Reese 
when she meets up with Kyle Reese and they're in um, that motel together is basically when she, when it's fully realized within, when it fully sinks in, like, no, I love this man. This man is, I would say it's our destiny, but it is like being in this room was the reason they were together. This this the entire point of the movie. It's the entire point of them coming together is so that they could fall in love and make John Connor. <laughs> and then we have, you know, the, the savior, you know, but she doesn't, she doesn't realize that she, she, she hears from Kyle Reese that, you know, she's this big legend and she's like, she's finding it hard to reconcile because everything that she does, like I'm, I have, she even says like, I have a heart. How can I be this legendary mother of the future when I have a hard enough time trying to balance my own, you know, budget, you know, I, I, I can't do that. I can't, I, I, I don't see it. I don't, I don't realize it, but it's through her actions that the story, the, one of the geniuses of the Terminator is like, it's not through her actions where I decide that, yeah, I'm going to save this. I'm going to do this. No, no, no. She, even when Kyle Reese, like, one, one point, and I'm sorry for jumping between, um, there's a point where Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor, after they were on the highway and they, you know, blew up Arnold Schwarzenegger in, in that truck, um, they're limping around, they're limping around. And apparently Kyle Reese was shot by Arnold Schwarzenegger during that chase. So Kyle Reese is, he's hurt. He's, he's, he's dying and he's heavy, you know, Linda, I mean, not, not Linda Hamill, but Sarah Connor. It's hard for her to kind of pick up Kyle Reese and, you know, she's, she's saying, come on, you gotta, you gotta get up. You gotta get up. And he's, 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 he's not getting up. And then she comes out of her mouth of like, get up soldier. I said, I said, move, get up soldier. And just her saying that, understand that Kyle is a soldier. He'll only understand because he is a soldier, he'll only understand, he'll only gather that strength because, you know, he has fought in wars. He has done this for other people. Her recognizing that and, 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 and activating that is one of the brilliance on her, one of her strengths on her. Like, she's terrified, too. She doesn't know if she's going to make it out of here. But she needs to pass on this strength to him. I, I need you to walk a little more. I need, you, I, need you to, I need you to survive just a little more. and. It works. He gets, he springs up and they both, you know, walk off. And I think that's one of the, I think that's one of the greatest examples of showing someone who is a legend, who has this incredible well of strength, but they don't, you, you don't need to see them jumping around, doing flips and, you know, do wielding pistols or something like that. No, it's, it's, it comes from within. The, the greatest display of her strength is from within. And it comes from the fact, it also comes from the fact that she loves Kyle Reese. She loves him. She wants to protect him. It switches the, the dynamic switch around where Kyle Reese was protecting her. No, she's protecting him. And she came a long way from a waitress who couldn't get a date to protecting a soldier from the future, you know, who's, who's, who's dying. She's, she's literally, she literally became a soldier right there. Um, and I, I really love that aspect of little, little Linda Hamilton. And you see her like growing leaps and bounds in T2, but I just want to focus on more on T2. And then one of the lines that really kind of cemented my love for the film and why I decided that this movie is a love story. I know Arnold Schwarzenegger is the Terminator. I know that the whole movie is centered around him, but I think the movie is anchored. The movie there's a new significance. There's a new perspective, a weight to this film. It, it would, this film would not exist. It would not be the same if it did not have this theme of love. And let's, let's, let's break it down. John Connor sends back, maybe knowingly, unknowingly, his father to save his mother, to save the future. I mean, all four of those things, family, love, duty, honor, uh, a child wanting to protect not only his mother, himself, his father, but all of humanity. If, if that's not love, if that's not, you know, sacrifice, I don't know what is. I, I don't know what is. And there is a romantic element to that. There's a there's a beautiful element to that, that. I'm sending someone back 
in time to save some, someone that means a lot to me. That if they don't send it, I won't be. If they don't do what they need to, I won't be. Another line that I like within the film, I think Kyrie says, he does say this. Um, he says, I, I came across time to be with you, sir. That's, that's, a, that's a G line. You know, I came across time, you know, to find you, to meet you, to love you. And having him say that, I, I wouldn't say that he knew that, like, I, I, my, I know that I'm not going to make it back to the future. I know damn sure I might not make it alive, but I'll do everything in my power to complete my mission. That's romantic. That's, that's something that needed to be said and coming from Kyle Reese, who is a soldier who's apparently John Connor, one of Con Con John Connor's best soldiers. It, it means a whole lot. So yeah, I want to kind of get into some of how some of the sequels kind of moved away from that. And I mean, some of you may disagree. Um, it may, and some of you may agree. I think the subsequent sequels after T2, I think T2 is, is by far like one of the best films, whether it's sci-fi or not of all time. But I think some of the subsequent films moved away from not only this thriller element, not only telling, telling a story in the most intimate way, but moving away from a story of love, a story of bonds, a story of family, a story of, it does not have to always be Sarah Connor and, Sarah Connor and John Connor and Kyle Reese. It, 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 I think the aspect of protecting and being there and ro that romantic element, I think they moved further and further away from that. The one film that came pretty close to that was Terminator Salvation. And I watched that movie dozens of times. I think I watched that movie more than I watched T2. It may be tied. But like, I like Terminator Salvation. I, 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 and some of you may, <laughs> some of you may disagree, but, um, I like that movie because it's I, 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 I identified not only with the characters, the story was very akin to like the first one, you know, it was, it was not only gritty, but there was, there was there, the tone of it was very akin to how the first, uh, the Terminator was, um, with some minor, you know, hiccups here and there. But, um, I, I feel that film is, is, is highly underrated and would I want to see another story in that universe again? Not necessarily, but I feel the subsequent sequels kind of moved away from that element of romance and, and being intimate with this looming threat of, you know, world ending apocalypse of, you know, AI versus mankind and, and stuff like that. They, they focus more on the callbacks. They focus more on Skynet. They focus more on, you know, the John Connor mythos and the Sarah Connor mythos and, you know, the T600 um mythos and and, and t 800 a50 I, I i apologize if i if i get them if i get the the classifications of the terminators incorrect um but they they focus more on one upping each class of terminator and they 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 moved away from the human element they moved away from telling oops they moved away from telling the story that needed to be told and that this is a story of mankind as messy as it is mankind enduring surviving loving you know, sacrificing. And that's what it meant. That's what matters. That's what matters in the end, Re regardless of how humanity goes out. We need to focus on telling those stories because they do matter. And there's a reason why James Cameron is one of the best directors, one of the most critically and financially successful directors of all time. He's able to tell these great stories where there's stories about, you know, the Titanic or the stories of, you know, aliens from another planet or you know, all these brilliant stories of, you know, robots, you know, hunting humans, all these stories. And the one central element, the one anchoring element in most, if not all of his movies centers on love. It comes from love and love. The story of love is one of the greatest stories of all. And you need that element. You need that. You need that tale. Not only to, to connect with your audience. But say that no matter what, no matter if the stars burn out, no matter if, you know, aliens descend to de descend to Earth or we go to the stars or no matter if, you know, robots, you know, wage war across all of humanity. 
we have to find love. We have to find a reason for us to exist. And if we're not seeing that, if not, if we're not able to tell those stories, if we're not able to feel those things, then it's all, it's all pretty much for nothing, you know? And a lot of films right now, they're kind of moving away from, moving away from telling these romantic love stories. You're not seeing people. And you probably heard this from a lot of different creators, you know, and a lot of different media pundits that, um, you know, we're not seeing people have relations <laughs> on screen. And to some extent, that's true. You're not seeing a lot of love making, um, so to speak, in a lot of, you know, the latest movies. Um, I don't know if that's intentional or not, but there's a disconnect. It's, it's pulling people away from connecting, you know, and I'm not saying all movies have done that. I've moved away from not showing scenes of romance, romance, not so, showing scenes of, you know, love making, but I feel that that core element, that attraction, that you see that person up there, your heart skips a beat, you know, your eyes widen up, you know, you get an extra pep in your step, you know, you know, this is what happened. This is Kyle Reese was a virgin. He was a, he was a hardened war virgin and it took him to travel back in time to have a purpose to protect another person for him to find love. I had to travel to the past to find love. I had to travel back to the past to find my true purpose. You know, I thought my purpose was on the battlefield. I thought my purpose was, you know, killing as many Terminators and, and saving, ex saving as many of my rebel um, compatriots as possible. But no, it was for me to sacrifice myself for one night with this woman. And that's beautiful. That that's, that's powerful. And I'm glad James Cameron and Gail Ann Hurd wrote that in such a way um, that it could be relatable, you know, that, that you can connect with those characters. So I love the Terminator. I'll probably watch it again, you know, tonight. Should the Terminator be remade? You guys are going to get pissed off at me. I think it should. I think it should. Now you're saying well, all the fucking horrible Terminator movies that have come out. Why do we need no, this? It's, 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 it, we, it, Hollywood has shown that this franchise is dead. And, and I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case. I think, I think you can revive any franchise if you approach it from not only a passionate, purposeful perspective, but you approach it knowing exactly confidently what you want to do. I'll give you a case in point. Um, there's a movie in the late aughts um, called Dread. And that movie was done beautifully. It had Carl Urban as the, the character. I think Olivia Thurlby was in it. Um, the lady from the Game of Thrones. I'm sorry, I forgot her name. She also played in Sarah Connor Chronicles. Uh, Lena Headey. Um, Headley. I'm uh, sorry. Lena Headley. Um, she played, you know, Mama. Um, I feel if we approach the remake of The Terminator in that style, stripped away of all the veneer of you know, big box office, special effects, you know, have some special effects in there, but have them done tastefully, you know, like in Mad Max Fury Road, where you didn't really know exactly what was CG and what was practical effects. I think if we approach it from a stripped down version and execute it with such precision, like Mad Max Fury Road, like Dread, I think not only can we redo the franchise, we could recontextualize it another way. We could center, sorry, that's my cat. Uh, we could center it more on not only just Sarah Connor, the Connors, but we can tell these different branching stories of maybe stories of the rebels and them and, and them existing in a world where, you know, they're running and hunting and, and trying to survive day to day. You know, you can tell these stories of, you know, being in the nineties and, you know, probably being, you know, someone who's John Connor's friend, you know, and you're, you're, you're trying to, you know, survive along with them. You know, you could tell these one off stories. I mean, there's millions of ways that we can go beyond this, but I feel if we strip down the veneer of overly produced and, and, and lacking that screenwriter quality, you know, get the screenwriter did, you know, and or, or, or that did, um, Chernobyl and, 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 and make it, a more intimate affair, something that's it's it's the impact of it is, is world ending. We're dealing with, you know, AI and robots, especially now, especially now how AI is just rampant around everything and, and all Hollywood is, has a boner for fucking AI. And 
I think if we kind of recontextualize that and so show how we are now and how it could be, but we give it a nice, not A24 look, but something that's more gritty, more realistic, I think we could, it could be a damn good remake. I think it, I think it could work, but we have to approach it with seriousness, with compassion, with a sense that we're trying to tell a story that's anchored in relationships, it's anchored in not only love, but in the human condition. I, I think it could work. I think, and with, yeah, the human condition, I think it could work, okay? So, sorry, I try to make this as more focused as possible. Um, if you like what I had to say, feel free to like, share, subscribe. Um, and tell me if you like this format, because I'm still kind of, experimenting with how I want to tell these videos, these stories, these movies that I really love. So tell me if you, if you like this format, if you don't like this format, I'll take it to heart and, 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 and work on it. All right. I appreciate all you guys. Have a good one. Have a job.